I have to say this about John's work and about Boys in the Hood is that I think that in the late 80s into the early 90s, um, the hood was a pretty chaotic place. Um, we all grew up, you know, uh, understanding our streets, you know, and so turf is sort of part of the DNA of human beings, I think. But when crack cocaine came in, all of a sudden, the turf was uh, a valuable place. And when they started making a lot of money slinging crack, that allowed them to buy guns. And, the, and so the turf wars got really violent. And most of us sort of said, what the hell is going on down there? And we used to watch the Sunday night uh, news, the murder news, Bruce, right? On Channel 5, Hal Fishman. And it was basically a recap of what was going on in, in the hood over the over the weekend, how many, how many you know, how many gang bangers got shot? And when Boys in the Hood came out, it wasn't just this innocent black guy who died in the in the alley. It was Ricky Baker, and all of a sudden, I think the whole culture sort of shifted into understanding that the ones, the victims, also have families. They have kids. They have dreams. They have futures. They have. Um, Disabilities, and it really, in a way, I kind of think it was the precursor, maybe the first early whisperings of Black Lives Matter. Yeah, yes. I was thinking the same. Yeah, and it, and it um, uh, so what I felt about the script, and then I met young brother John, and, uh, and we, we made a great movie together. All of us made a great movie together, but we, this movie has not gone away from our culture, and this movie inspires our culture to this day. To add to that, um, as an actor, I feel like sometimes people don't remember what you say. They remember how you make them feel. And at one uh, screening, I came out, and there was this young boy, and he was really young. And it surprised me that kids so young were parents let them view this movie because that wasn't my experience. And in fact, I didn't even know what an ice cube was when I did the movie. <laughs> but what happened was I came out and this young boy was standing there and he was crying. And I walked over to him and I said, what's wrong? And he says, I'm going to go home and tell my mama to stop calling me a motherfucker. <laughs> and that touched me. I just, I just have one story about me seeing the picture that really, really was really a prophetic experience for me. Um, and Steve actually was up um, there with me. Remember when we went opening night to the Baldwin Theater? The Baldwin Hills? Yeah. Oh, Baldwin Hills the Theater, one where right? I saw the kid. I went to a couple places on there. I went to Baldwin Theater, to make sure nothing was going to happen there. I went to the Chinese Theater when they had three things. So I'm, I, I stopped a fight in front of the Chinese Theater on Hollywood Boulevard, right? You know what I mean? Come on now, you're going to mess up my, my career. You know? <laughs> but, but then we went, but, and I was the there universe. at the Cineplex Odeon when everything popped off. Wait, hold on, I'll get this story. Cineplex Odeon, we'll talk about the violence that happened in the theater, all around the country, but it didn't happen in the theaters. There was, happened, there was something happened around the corner from a theater or down the street or whatever, they would attribute it to the picture. Of course. Okay? Yeah. And so, because nothing had ever been like it. But it's specifically at the Cineplex Odeon, Terminator 2 had come out a week and a half before and Boys and Hood was showing a theater that was only seat, seated maybe between 200 people, yeah, right? You were in the small houses, not the big And they, and they had the, the multiplexes house. or whatever, right? Yeah. And you had all these kids outside that really wanted to see Boys in the Hood, right? And so we're going in and you know, look at it and stuff, right? All these kids outside and, and people were in, inside the theater looking at the theater and stuff. And it's like, it's like okay, I'll just be real. You know, there's, whole, there's, a whole bunch of, there's a whole bunch of crips in there, right? People in blue and everything. There were two kids dressed in all red. They're going to walk in and I said, listen, don't let them in the theater. I said, wait a minute. Don't let them in the theater. I'm telling you. They let them in the theater. I said, they let them in the theater. Me and my, my folks walked out. Malcolm, me and Malcolm and everybody got there and we left. We're coming out of here. Boom. Everything popped off. Because the minute after that, the studios got the, the security. But going back to the Baldwin, here's my story. We were at the Baldwin and you were there. I think you went there with Aaron and with Aaron. your son and everything. Else. And... They come out, people come out of theater stuff, mm -hmm. and this girl comes up to me and she's all crying, crying. She's and she's with her boyfriend. She's like, I just love this movie. You made this movie. I love this movie. It's such a good movie. This and her boyfriend, who was like, you know, he was just really, really thugged up. He was just he. You could tell he had life on his face, right? 
and he just he while she was she was explaining what he felt. Yeah. He wasn't going to articulate anything about what because he was looking off in space, like well, what he just saw. Mm-hmm. And then he looked down at me and said, "You made this movie?" He said, "Yeah." He said, and he just hugged me. Hmm. And then they walked away. Yeah. But it was like one of the things like he just looked. He it was like she was she was his woman. She was telling him. She was telling me what this movie meant to him and his life and what he's seen and everything. It was like, that's really one of my most profound yeah. moments because it was in a neighborhood. It was right next to the jungles. It was like, oh, it was like, whoa, you know. 